Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I am finally not talking about random number generation in R. Okay, so I am moving on to the t.test function. As you can probably imagine, the t.test function is used for t-test. So you can do one sample t-test, two sample t-test, and paired sample t-test. Oh, and you can also do it uh, assuming and not assuming equal paired. And you can change the content level, but I can't imagine why you would. Okay, so I'm going to start with that one sample case. So I'm going to generate random values from the normal distribution. Now I'm going to do 10 of them. So I'm going to set the mean equal to 1 and then standard deviation uh, 2. Why not? Okay. So in the one sample t-test case, we want to compare this sample to a hypothesized population mean. So for this we do t dot test. The first argument is x. We can say x equals x for the put in x. And for the one sample t-test, we need to put in a mu. The default mu may be zero, I'm actually not sure, but it's never a bad idea to specify the population parameter you're comparing to. On a side note, if you don't know, mu is a population parameter. The, the, the x nader and the x bar is the sample mean. So you can pay a sample mean to a population parameter. Okay, so we got, let's compare it to two. It is probably going to be a significant result because it's fairly different from the population mean of one of the data we generated. So, no, I guess the standard deviation I gave was uh, large enough you couldn't tell the difference. Right, let's do that one more time but with a large example and it will almost certainly be significant. Yes, a very small p value. You can safely say that this data with a mean of one is different than a population mean of two. Okay so now we're going to go to the two sample t test. So I'm going to make another variable called y, our norm. And hey, let's make it the same. Oh, can't do that. Because if I do that, there will be exactly the same. So we just want mean equal to one and then deviation equal to two. So I'm going to not make that mistake. So y equal r norm 100 value. They don't have to be equal, but I'm going to make them equal. Like they could be 98 value. They could be 5 value, even though that would be kind of a goofy t-test. So what I say mean equal to two and standard deviation equal to one. I think I got that backward. One comma two. Okay, then we can do the three test to see if I can remember things from five seconds ago. Hit comma y. And yes, that was apparently correct. So our p value is not significant, indicating that they're not statistically significantly different. And they shouldn't be because they think they're drawn from the same population mean. I specified one for both of them. Okay. So now we have paired sample t test. And I could do the same thing in the run it with paired equal true, but I don't like that idea. Because I want to make it actually paired data. So let's let's include my environment. Yep, let's get rid of it. So if x is going to be another R norm, if I can type, 
Okay, 100, comma, 1, comma, 2. Okay? And then y is going to be x plus more normally distributed data. I'm going to say I live in the 0.5 and a standard deviation of 1. So basically, this thing is their baseline with some intervention. The intervention has a mean effect of 0.5 and a standard deviation of that effect of 1. No, as I'm afraid you know, for example, t-test is practically test retest. And so that's the setup. Now I'm going to do t.test. Okay, comma y, but this time, a is going to equal true. And you can see that the mean difference right here is 0. 0.44. So it's kind of capturing what we got going on. And it's in the other direction, obviously. So let's, let's do that again. But let's make it better at capturing the mean difference. So let's say 10,000. Why is going to have to also be 10,000 or zero an error? And now we do a paired sample t test and dead on. It, it captures the mean difference of negative 0 0.5 and some decimals. Obviously, if we had infinitely many samples, that mean difference would be closer and closer to 0.5. And that constant interval would get near, more narrow and more narrow. Okay, so I know I said I don't know why you would, but I'm going to go ahead and see out here. X comma y, and then I'm going to take the confidence level. So the default is 0.95. So let's say you want a 90, oh, you want a 90 percent confidence interval, and there you go. Yeah, I get 90 percent confidence. Interval. Um, I want to do that. I always stick with 95 percent. I know people have differing opinions on p values and how important they are. Oh, I didn't even talk about a one-sided or two-sided t-test. I kind of took for granted that you wanted a two-sided t-test. Okay, now I'm not going to actually go through that, but yeah, you can, the default is two-sided, but you can do greater than or less than, and that gets into some nuanced opinions about whether or not you ought to. I'd say you ought not to, and just take the penalty of doing a two-sided t-test, but my opinion is not the only one that matters, and it's right there. You can you can do the alternative. That's greater than or less than. Okay. So that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching.